we used to work like 11, 12 hours sometimes for the same amount of money. It's like supposed to be like eight hours. So that's what I see a lot of violations right there. And I say, this is not right. In 2016, Columbia Legal Services was approached by the Northwest Justice Project. They had heard from individual farm workers that there were serious problems at a dairy farm in eastern Washington. There were over 300 dairy workers at that dairy that needed legal representation. This was really a great team collaboration with our two class representatives, Mr. Martinez and Ms. Aguilar, along with our co-counsel, Mark Cody, and a great team of CLS advocates, ultimately with a great team of amicus attorneys. This is a dairy that runs 24-7. They milk 3,000 cows each shift. He trabajado en las lecherías por 16 meses. No nos daban el lonche como se debía de dar. El lunch room eran las, las ratas en the floor all over the place. Había botes de aceite, líquidos, químicos en ese mismo cuarto donde comíamos. Los breaks por la misma, la misma cosa. No habían breaks. When workers work long hours and don't take breaks, they get tired and they are at risk of injury. And here, both Mr. Martinez and Ms. Aguilar experience serious injuries. Me pateó una vaca en el, aquí en el brazo. Me puso una pata arriba de mi mano cuando estaba... Puse la mano así en el flor. Es muy peligroso. Yo llegué a mirar personas que le pegaron en el, en el pecho. Y lo peor del caso, no es esta, sino que el mayordomo hacía que esperara hasta que viniera la supervisora para que pudieran ir al hospital. 40 minutos, 30 minutos esperando y con mucho dolor. We thought about both how to address the dangerous conditions farm workers face on the job every day. And we made a conscious effort here to reveal and address systemic racism within our legal framework. Over 99% of farm workers in Washington state are Latinx. The employers are treating their workers less humane than the livestock or the cows. And I think it was actually Mr. Martinez who said at the first meeting that one of the managers told him that these cows are worth more than you. The Overtime Pay Act, of course, was adopted in the 30s as part of the New Deal, really, to, to make sure that people were treated fairly. So when you exclude someone from that, you better have a good reason. In this case, the reason for the exclusion was, frankly, that people of color might take advantage of it. FDR himself was very concerned about giving overtime pay to black farm workers in the South because it might disrupt Jim Crow and it might cost him votes. It is very important to bring the historical context in and for lawyers working within the system to make these examinations. Agricultural work is arduous and dangerous. I think we agree on that. The workers are exposed to heat and cold in the fields and they labor in geographic isolation. They're less likely to be voters, less likely to speak English as a first language, aren't wealthy, in fact, are among the poorest workers in the nation. They have a shorter life expectancy, a higher incidence of disease and disability, limited access to health care, insurance, and education, less likely to have employer-provided health benefits, higher rates of sexual harassment and assault, higher rates of other exploitation, including financial, higher exposure to toxins, more likely to be people of color, at least now, uh, less likely to have sanitary and stable housing, less likely to have collective bargaining rights, uh, less likely to have lobbyists, less likely to make campaign contributions to elected officials. Would you then still suggest that it's a coincidence that labor laws have consistently excluded them from the protections afforded other workers? The court has recognized for decades that farm work is extremely dangerous work. And here, the court based its decision on Article 2, Section 35, which protects all workers in dangerous jobs. So these concepts together mean that all farm workers should be entitled to overtime. The decision came out earlier this fall, and in late November, the dairy and the industry interveners filed a motion for a reconsideration. So that is now pending before the court. We sure hope that is resolved quickly. 
Mr. Martinez and Ms. Aguilar. They were incredibly courageous in coming forward to risk retaliation and to continue on in the struggle for many years for the benefit of all farm workers. The experience that I had was very beautiful, very marvelous to see that there are organizations that are for helping us, for protecting the rights of the worker. Y eso es muy agradecido. Yo tengo esperanza, tengo fe. I hope we can go all the way and make a change, not only in Ayacima County, all over the place.